to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome from the white sands of Waikiki Beach. This is Bear Wozniak, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My condo in Waikiki is exactly right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. I can look down from my window right now, right down where the altar would be directly below me, 25 floors below. I'm looking out at the ocean. There's um, The swell's kind of fading a little bit today, but we had some good waves yesterday. And looking forward to getting out there and getting some surf time in. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, this adventurous TV show called Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. We ride motorcycles all across the United States together. The season one, we rode from Jacksonville, well, from Cocoa Beach, Florida, all the way over to San Diego, then up to Monterey, California. Season two, we rode down to uh, uh, Miami with Archbishop Wenske from Cocoa, went from Cocoa Beach to Key West, actually, and uh, joined Archbishop Wenske. Then up to the cold, freezing rain of New Jersey, down the Blue Ridge Parkway, the Tale of the Dragon. And then the next seasons we shot here in Hawaii. And uh, all of it sounds so beautiful, but actually it's all quite a challenge. But you can watch Long Ride Home. Season one is being aired on EWTN now, and season two will be coming out just in a matter of days. And, uh, but you can see the Long Ride Home season two episodes. In fact, you can see all of our episodes uh, right now. If you want to, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and become a Patreon donor. And on certain levels, you get access to um, Long Ride Home months before it's even aired. So it's pretty cool. People have been asking this. When does season two come out? Uh, and so you can do that. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, become a Patreon donor. And at certain levels, you get access to things early. You get access to this radio show too, sometimes two months before it airs, and you get the video version of it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but why, why does Long Ride Home uh, cast such a... Why, why, why does it intrigue people so much? And why are the men so devoted to be on the show? They don't get paid. It's, it's the hardest work you can possibly do to do a reality TV show, riding motorcycles, taking 250 to 500 mile leaps and film a reality show at the same time in the blazing heat and the freezing rain. Why do we do that? Why did we want to go out into the, to the desert um, of the Big Bend country down by Mexico, down by the Rio Grande, where Pancho Villa, you know, crossed over when he was fleeing uh, Blackjack, I think it was Blackjack uh, Pershing. Um, why, why, why do we want to? Why do? Why do we want to face that adversity? And why does it bring us together as men? Uh, there's something in the challenge. There's something in the, in the brotherhood of men being together and helping each other. We have we've had bikers go down, and we've had to you know help them. Uh, people get exhausted, and believe me, as the host, the writer and the producer of the show, um, men have seen me at my worst on the set, and yet they still love me and support me and encourage me. Why is that? What is it that, why is it that uh, brotherhood is so significant in bringing about um, a deeper journey ourselves? Life is a journey. The long ride home, it's a journey. Uh, all of mankind's been on a journey from the earliest days when man first was created till now, you can see there's been this journey that we're all going on. And each one of our individual lives is a, a personal pedagogy. The church has been on a journey. Um, but we want to make that journey from captivity into freedom. The way you do that is you do it together. And so we have a guest with us today. His name is Nathaniel. And I'm going to try to ask you to pronounce your last name, Nathaniel. No problem. Bin Versi. It's easy. I could have done that. Yes. Nathaniel Bin Versi. And he is uh, with uh, Exodus 90. What's your official role there? Director of missions, I believe. That's correct. Yep. Director of Mission for Exodus 90. Well, we've been hearing about Exodus 90 for a while. It's been like a vicious rumor. And so we finally thought we would get to the bottom of it. And, uh, and actually, um, thrilled to have you on the show because I, what you guys are doing is having a significant impact and it's bringing brothers together. So Nathaniel, um, let, let's uh, dig in a little bit about who you are first, though. Sure. Uh, your, your background, your, your, your walk with the Lord, how you got to where you are right now. Yeah, born and raised Catholic, but left the faith and was non-denominational and an assembler of God when I was young, maybe about middle school or so, and because I was just a very prideful being, if you will, still working on it today. 
And so went with my neighbors. They had four boys. I have two sisters. So I went with my neighbors to church. Their church was far more fun than the Catholic church as a middle schooler. You know, they had a rock wall, Xbox, maybe even Jesus and some good music. So did that for a while. And then in high school, a young Catholic priest was willing to, to sit down and kind of argue with me about the faith. And somehow, even as a high schooler, his theology, this priest was better than the Swiss cheese theology that I had as he filled in all yeah, the holes. Yeah, that's, that's such a great way to say it, because there is a theology there. There is a beauty in the Assembly of God people. And, uh, you know, I, I, I left the church for a season. In fact, I don't really say I left the church in a way. I felt the church left me. They just weren't there for me when I had questions. You know, mm. there, wasn't a, there wasn't an avenue. I didn't, never heard the early church fathers and, <clears throat> and that. But, um, and, but I was hungry. So at a young age, you were, were you really seeking the Lord uh, when you were— when you were going, you wanted to find something deeper with God, or was it just like it was kind of attracted you because it was fun or a little bit I of think both? At first, yeah, at first it was just fun. I was I'm in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. In about seventh grade, when the when the family I was going with switched from this large uh, non-denominational church to this small Assembly of God church, that's when I was like, well, now the church services are two hours and boring, except yeah. for all the Holy Spirit <laughs> stuff going on. So I have to make a decision. And I was going to Catholic schools, so I was already too— deep into arguing with my Catholic school friends about why the Catholic church was wrong to come back at that point yet. That's so, so cool. I, I mean, you, you can get, more. you can get so twisted so fast. I know I did. I was going to a, a Southern Baptist university Baylor and uh, then got involved in the Catholic charismatic renewal and in the, in the late, in the seventies. And then all my friends were non-denominational or Baptist. And I so easily acquired their theology, not even knowing that it wasn't Catholic theology. And, um, and, uh, you know, you just accept uh, sola fide, sola scriptura, by faith alone, yeah. and also only in scripture, and and uh, and it's real. I mean, they they really do know Jesus, because Jesus is kind of kind of like that person who comes and meets you on your terms sometimes for a while, but then leads you into the fullness of faith. And so you're right; that's a good way to see it. The Swiss cheese, it's there's it's there, but there's holes. What were the yeah. come of the, What were some of the? Do you remember some of the things that you were most concerned about? You know. Uh... Certainly aspects of the Eucharist and the liturgy itself, like why are we doing something that seems so archaic uh, and so unnecessary? Why do we have to have such a structure? Why can't we just worship God exactly kind of, as you said, like on our own terms? Why can't we just, you know, praise him? Why do we have to be confined? But certainly there's a beauty and a reason to, to why the Lord has us that way and, and made more sense once I actually took the time to learn about it. I remember the book Song of Solomon, which I always was the first book that really just grabbed my attention. Uh, because of the multidimensionality of it, you know, the different layers of it. And there's a scene where the woman is kind of longing for the bridegroom and yeah. he comes to her in the night or she goes out and seeks him who her soul loves. He came to her in the night and then went right with her, not just to her home, but to her mother's home, right? So she, he's, mm -hmm. she's definitely got him on her terms. He's there to meet her. He's, he's going to meet you as a come as you are party. Yeah. But then in the next sequence, you see that her heart is longing for him and she not, he knocks on the door and uh, and opens it and then leaves and when he and then she, he he draws her to follow him, uh, but but she kind of gets beat up a little bit by the watchman and stuff before she finds him. It's like so there is the time when we have Jesus on our terms, and then he says, "Okay, now come with me, follow me, come up to the high places, come and come and come and let me let me show you the fullness of what I have for you." And so that was kind of your journey in a way. Yeah, I love you so much to meet where you're at, but I also love you so much. I'm going to take you somewhere better. Absolutely. Uh, have, you, have you ever read Catherine Hunyard's book, Hinds Feet in High Places? I haven't, no. It's another great uh, book from uh, similar to that where a woman named Much Afraid meets Jesus in the valley of the shadow of the death and all of her, her cousins don't want her to leave, but he takes her up into the high places. But he takes her there by mm -hmm. going where? Through the desert. And hence we kind of look at it where it brings us full circle back to Exodus 90, the whole experience of the crossing of the desert. What the heck? Who came up with this but how, what's the genesis? What is Exodus 90? Who came up with this? We're just, we hear all about it. We're just so excited about it. Tell us all about that. Yeah, it started with Father Brian Dore. He's a priest of the Diocese of Lafayette in Indiana. And he was working at a seminary, Mount St. Mary's Seminary, as a formator there. And he saw that men, even in the seminary, were so bombarded with the things of this world. Their ears were so filled. Their eyes were so distracted that they couldn't even hear their own call to the priesthood or have a conversation with our Lord that was uninterrupted. So he decided to take them through the book of Exodus and so they could learn how the Lord led Israel out of Egypt 
and we could be then, these men could be taken out of the slavery and the sinfulness that they were in and the distractions of the world that they were in as well. So that was the, the very beginning. And how many years ago was this? It's about five, six years ago now, uh, probably more, I guess, in the seminary before it was really formal, maybe seven years. Uh, but now it's we're in our fourth year as an actual organization and came, became public about four years ago and desire to give this to lay men. If, if the men in the seminary have this problem with the world, you know, how much more so do husbands and fathers have this problem of being distracted and not able to hear the Lord and lead their family? Well, we're going to talk more, not just, to, we're going to talk about the program and then about how, about the, the, the journey, the, the, I guess this is the an Ignatian journey, right? Uh, some, so, some form of it. Some form. Sure. Okay, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to exodus90.com, find out more about how you can become a leader of your own group and, or how you can participate in a group. And then go to our website, deepadventure.com. My, we have a, a special running all, all summer long. Anyone who becomes a Patreon donor at any level will, will uh, receive my latest book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, uh, we have a guest today, Nathaniel Benversi. He is the director of missions for Exodus 90. So everybody, there's a big buzz. Yeah, big buzz about Exodus 90. And I love the Old Testament. I love the stories. I love the how the heroes there are, you know, full of flaws, and yet somehow God uh, wins them over. And the whole story of Moses and, and the Exodus um, you know, from, from Egypt. How did you use that parallel to develop Exodus 90? And what is Exodus 90 all about? Yeah, Exodus 90 is a spiritual exercise based on prayer, asceticism, and fraternity to lead men to freedom from the things of this world, whether it be sinful vices or simply distractions of the world. They can better serve their wife, their family, and the church, their brothers around them as well. How do we choose Exodus? Of course, Israel is being led out of Egypt, being led out of slavery. But as Dr. Han explains to us, it's it's more about getting Egypt out of Israel than mm. it is about getting Israel simply out of Egypt. This, this internal way of being that they inherited from the land that they were in needs to be purged from them. The same as we struggle with uh, here in the United States or anywhere in the world. It's true. You know, they're coming out of Egypt. They've had this miraculous, miraculous intervention. And then within a, a short while, they're worshiping a cow. You know, they, in other words... They had, it's, it was the internal change. They had, they had left Egypt, but Egypt hadn't left them yet. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So how does the Exodus 90 program work then? Yeah, so for over 90 days, you meet as a fraternity, about five to seven men is what we call for. And every week you meet with that fraternity to hold each other accountable and to walk with each other and push each other in your disciplines of prayer and your disciplines of asceticism. The disciplines of prayer include daily reading of scripture as we walk through the book of Exodus. And, uh, of course, a daily holy hour is called for as well. If you can't do a daily holy hour, at least 20 minutes of silent prayer. Not exactly praying the rosary or another form of popular piety. Not that those are bad. They're very good. But as men, we really need to be able to hear our Lord and foster the ability to hear him so we can lead our families better. So that is the answer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is real (laughs) significant what you've said. You know, because I love the liturgy of the hours and the rosary and... Eucharistic adoration in the mass. What's that 20 minutes of silence you're talking about? How do you, how do you, you know, I'm a Benedictine. <laughs> we have, we have the Jesus prayer at our monastery that we pray. Um, you know, I'm a, 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 an oblate. Um, what is the silent prayer you're talking about? Do, do you enter into that after you've meditated on scripture? Or how does that work? At the end of each daily scripture, we also have a meditation. It kind of exposes some of the aspects of scripture we might have missed or, certainly digs into masculine spirituality and how we can apply the scripture that is so old to our very life today as it speaks to us. So at the end of that, then you're called into this or led into this by the meditation with either some questions or some thoughts, really push to dialogue with our Lord, to work on dialoguing with this person who loves us, right? So that we both can speak to him, but also give him the time to speak back to us. So that at any moment in the day when we're facing situations, we can call upon the Lord because we fostered and practiced that relationship of, of speaking and listening. Well, can you give me a one minute version of what, what that sounds like? I mean, really, it's a black box yeah. to some people. You're, yeah. having your, you're having your silent prayer 
Um, you're, so you're not, are you speaking out loud to the Lord or you're just silently speaking to him with your heart and listening to him? How does that work? Most guys will end up in, in a chapel. So whether in front of a tabernacle and Eucharistic adoration. So most of the time there's people around. So you could certainly speak out loud, but with people around, you're probably in your head. But still you're saying things like, Lord, this is what I read in scripture today. You've been leading this people through the desert and they're tired and they're hungry. I've been practicing asceticism. I'm tired and hungry. What can I do about this? I want to quit. And you just pause, right? You expressed your need and you left space and then you listen. And for most of the first quarter of Exodus 90, all you're hearing is silence. And then you get distracted with thoughts and you call your mind back in. Lord, Lord, I'm distracted. Please speak to me on this topic. Teach me how I can continue. And you do that for probably the first 20 to 30 days. But you start to hear, you start to realize what is just a thought in my head versus what is actually the Lord's speaking. And, and, and you learn that, I think, like a baseball player learns how to, 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 uh, to bat, uh, batting practice. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times when you first, well, I think I got an inclination and uh, insight from the Lord and you realize, no, that wasn't. But, <laughs> but, but you, so yeah. you begin to, as the Bible says, seek peace, pursue it. As you pursue uh, that in your heart that brings you peace, you sense that this is the Lord's drawing you, leading you, sometimes pushing you. I always say the mother angelic, a little shove in the back, you know, to get moving. <laughs> but yeah. but um, you learn, no, that wasn't the Lord. And then you learn, yeah, but that is. Yeah, then, then when I sense, when I sense that sort of mm, little yellow light in my heart, I should have listened to that and not passed that, gone through that yellow light. It became a red light. Um, maybe this was the right thing, but at the wrong time. Maybe I needed to be patient, or maybe that was a, a, a complete no. And you begin to to realize this is the Lord and this isn't the Lord, but you do that. And if you can hit 300, you're a, you know, all pro baseball player, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. so you get better and better and, and you learn that two o'clock in the afternoon, that prayer time you had that morning, suddenly there was an insight from that morning that you're using, or because you're tuned in to the Holy Spirit, you're more able to hear him amidst all the noise. Is that Makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely the case. Yeah, I love I love that you turn it to sports and practice because it's just so necessary. Most of us can can uh, can look at our golf game and be like, man, I golf every year and I just don't get any better. Yeah, because you golf one or two times every year and there's no practice, right? Yeah, so right. The same with prayer. If we're not willing to practice, if we get frustrated and quit, we're not really going to get much better unless the Lord totally just you know pounds us with grace, which is possible. It's a spiritual exercise, though. It's an exercise. It's like a muscle. And you talked about how when you seek silence, sometimes there's distractions. There always is. It's part of the exercise is yeah. the distraction, is learning, oh, I've, I've, just, I've just drifted off for a minute. Where did I go? And, 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 and you gradually exercise more and more. That's why for me, as a Benedictine praying the Jesus prayer, um, I may just say his name, Jesus, Lord Jesus, but it's, it's kind of almost an ambient sound in my heart. Uh, and I'm doing the 100 beats, you know, of the yeah. Jesus prayer. And if I'm doing it silently, it, I'm, I'm, my breath is, is consistent with my words. And the tactile feeling, the kinesthetic uh, feeling of the, of, the, of the beads keeps me present. For me, I have ADHD, man. <laughs> and my silence is often on the move. You know, I'm, I'm walking on the beach, uh, praying or stand up paddling or whatever. I'm on the move because the Lord taught. I heard in a whisper from the Lord when I was about 30, you're my walking man, go walk. And I've, the rest of my life, I've walked and prayed. Probably walked around the world several times. <laughs> so, so, so you've mentioned, so, that, so there's the elements of prayer, the meditation on the word. What's this asceticism? That's a horrible thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so asceticism, or acts of self-denial, to say it more simply, helps us to separate from the things of this world, to build up our muscles to say no to things, but also allows us to offer acts of penance, and offer acts of offering from our baptismal priesthood. We're all baptized priest, prophet, and king. But how often do we talk about who we are, or how we live, our baptismal priesthood? Yet our spouse, our children, our domestic church is longing for us to live that priesthood out, to make offerings for them, to lead them uh, to our Lord. So these acts of asceticisms, we have a list uh, for, for men to take up. It includes something like, you know, giving up sweets and sweet drinks giving up watching sports, giving up uh, watching any type of movie, listening only to music that lifts your soul to God, giving up internet use except for, for work or essentials like paying the bills, 
uh, taking cold showers as well to really get us to, to make an offering of ourselves for our families. So, it's, so, you know, there's something in that you can choose. You can, it's a proactive way of saying, to, it's, a, it's a proactive means of really developing self-mastery. Definitely. And it's a way of offering, saying, Lord, you're, you're more important uh, to me than that. Is, is, is that. is that what it's, you know, in our, we have a thing called Bears Man Cave that men join. It's mm -hmm. a, a two-way video chat, and they become a member of our private Facebook group, and we challenge and equip and mobilize each other. And one of the things there is we say we want you to do 60, 60 minutes of exercise a day. You know, we, we want you, because physically, if you're not ready, if you're not physically, like you very, look very fit. If you're not fit, you're not going to be up to your mission. Yeah. And, one of, and, we, and, we, and we definitely challenge the men to keep their, their sugar carbs down below a certain level because it makes you lethargic and fat and weak and inflamed and, and you can't function. But that's all about self-discipline, all about self-mastery. But it's not to get the focus on yourself. Well, what it, you know, what it, what's the bridge? It's to get you redirected. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the beginning of the exercise, we have the men write down their why. Why are you doing this? Why are you entering, entering into the spiritual exercise? And that why, as described and, and laid out for them, has to include eyes on God and eyes on those they love. And Amen. from that why, then they can live it out. Okay, we're talking with Nathaniel Benversi. He is the director of missions with Exodus 90. There's vicious rumors all over the place. You got to join Exodus 90. And I figured, well, the best way to do it would get a hold of Nathaniel. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and find out more about how you can participate in our ministry. We'll be right back. Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I got to tell you, man, um, there's something about resistance training uh, in our physical and in our spiritual re regimen. I know for myself, I stand up paddle surf almost uh, exclusively, unless I'm tandem surfing with my wife or the surf is over 18 feet. I'm stand up paddle surfing because it works my core, it works my toenails, it works my ears, it works every part of my body paddling out. And then dropping in uh, to get, you know, with high cardio to paddle fast enough to catch a big wave. And then also I tend to go on about a four-mile paddle surf. I, I just catch waves while I'm paddling. Out here in Waikiki, it's like living on an 18-hole golf course. There are all these different, different types of reefs and breaks. But when I come back, I'm going against the trade winds. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm facing resistance. And sometimes it feels like um, I'm going backwards almost. But, it's, it's, but I'm going home. I have a goal now. I'm heading back to my home. Uh, resistance training is something that we should choose. Every year, I choose a physical, uh, a physical challenge. I bicycled across the United States. I, I um, maybe got my black ninja black belt or whatever. But every year, I uh, paddle the Molokai Channel, the most treacherous 35 miles, one of the most tre treacherous channels in the world here in Oahu. Always setting a physical challenge. Why? Because I know that I can, I can create something internally from the outside in. Uh, paddling your bicycle across the United States is not a physical challenge. It's an internal challenge. It's an act of your self-mastery. It's an act of that virtue of fortitude and, um, and, and the will to will to continue. And so we're talking with Nathaniel Benversi from Exodus 90. We've been covering this area of asceticism, saying in a proactive way, <clears throat> saying no to some things, but saying yes, uh, yes uh, in other ways. But it's saying, I, hey, listen, I'm in control, you're not, to your body and to your, right? Tell, tell us more yeah. about the Catholic history of that. Yeah, absolutely. So the church fathers, of course, have been practicing asceticism right from the beginning. And the Lord tells us, take up your cross daily and come and follow me. And what is our cross? It's not our sins, right? That was Christ's cross. But we have our own crosses to take up, taking care of our, the things of this, this world that have been entrusted to us, our family, or or. Uh, other loved ones of the church. And so ascetical practices is that training ground, is that gym that we uh, put on ourselves to take up each day so that we're, we're strong enough to live it in the moment. Yeah, I took this guy out, Christian Okoya. He's all pro running back from the Chiefs. He was called the Nigerian Nightmare, massively strong man. And he, uh, he had been retired by that time. He could hardly paddle because he was so strong. He couldn't lift his arms to paddle, you know. I said, hey, man, why are, you so, why are you such great shape? He goes, 
Because every morning I have an appointment with myself for an hour and no one can take that appointment from me. I exercise. We need that same dedication. Every man should know when and where he's going to have his prayer time. In early in the morning, in the middle of the day or at night, or maybe you do it all at once. But every man, if we just say flat out, if you're not spending an hour with a day every, the, every day with the Lord in prayer, you're a poser. Hmm. What about this area of fraternity? That's the missing link, I think, in all of this. Yes. So fraternity is essential to Exodus 90. One cannot do Exodus 90 without a fraternity. It's completely an exercise based around it. So those five to seven men, as mentioned earlier, you do meet with them every week. You have your fraternity meeting. You also hold fraternity outings about once a month with these men so you can really grow. What's an together. outing? Are we going to go play? Uh, we're going to go play. Um, I don't know. We're going to go bowling or something. <laughs> what's an, uh, what's an yeah, outing? Yeah, you can go bowling. Uh, you can go just find a woods and hike through it, you know, find yeah. a mountain and summit. Like, something with adversity. Something, together. something with a little adversity. Yeah. Yeah. To really bond together, because these aren't just your brothers for these 90 days. I mean, the, the goal is to acknowledge here that we are a certain way before Exodus 90 that we, quote unquote, don't like about ourselves because we haven't had that fraternity, most likely. We haven't had guys to push us and to challenge us. Now, in Exodus 90, we gain those men. And what a tragedy it would be to just be like, hey, and now I have some more freedom. See you guys later. I'm going back to my man cave where I can go back to being uh, a boy, if you will. Yeah. Right. A boy cave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this fraternity really helps you and pushes you. One man in that fraternity is what we call an anchor. And I don't mean boat anchor. I mean, like when you're rock climbing, and you set an anchor. Or when you're mountaineering or ski mountaineering, you set anchors. So that when you're falling, before you crash and die, your anchor catches you. And he's there and he's set strong. So he'll check in with you every day and you check in with him. And you're a strong anchor for him as well so that we don't fall to a spiritual death. So are, is, are there several anchors within the, the, the small band of brothers, or is there one main anchor, or how does that work? Each man partners up, so each one would have That's one awesome. other anchor. Yeah. You got one, one you know, I, I've done some rock climbing. It sounds like you have too. Yeah. And that guy who sets the anchor, that guy who's belaying the rope, you know, they all, all are, there, there's a, you know, you need that team. Absolutely. When I, when I got my first, when I got my Ninja Black Belts, we had to, to uh scale a rock that just didn't, I didn't see one finger grip even, you know, <laughs> a fingernail, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, but just by, and at some point it's almost a leap of faith to get to the next level, but you have confidence in your anchor and you have confidence in the guy belaying you. And there is that, there is that brotherhood, uh, you know, of challenging and encouraging each other. And that's where you, that, so those relationships don't end at the end of the 90 days. That's just kind of the beginning of a deeper walk with other men. Absolutely. Right. This is more than just having buddies, as I'm sure you've talked about on your show plenty of times. Right? This is a true brotherhood, men who are willing to actually challenge you and push you to be better. Yeah, we, we uh, years ago, I had a group of six guys and we had the challenge uh, to do uh, 60 pushups and 60 minutes of prayer and 60 crunches every day and 60 minutes of, of, of cardio. So 60, 60, 60, 60. And the group texted me, I did it, you know, and, and if not, you know, but that group text of the of five or six guys became kind of a, a brotherhood then. We'd, we'd begin to, you know, ask each other for prayer, for help or insight, you know. Yeah. It'd be really cool when you really needed help and you know there are uh, two or three of them right there begin to pray the rosary for you, you know. Absolutely, Bear. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a gift that men realize after Exodus 90 how important it was and how beneficial it is post Exodus 90. And we're, pr we're currently working on day 91 content. So for, awesome. For things after Exodus 90, so that these fraternities can stay together and continue to grow in ongoing formation, continue to practice prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. Not in the same level as Exodus 90, uh, but certainly something worth doing to continue that fraternity and well, what, growth as men. So Exodus90.com, right? That's and right. And you have a book available, and it's called, that you wrote. Ex uh, yep, Exodus 90. It's the spiritual exercise. It's also available on the mobile app, Exodus 90. And how did... All the, do they, get it through, go, do they get it through Amazon or do they go to your website to get access to that? Yeah, straight to the website. You can't get the book without actually creating an account because we want those accounts are completely based around the fraternity. Right. So instead of guys just buying a book and saying, I'm going to do this myself, that's just spiritually dangerous to do, to do this exercise by oneself and not what it's about. So, I just, it's just incredible. What, it, 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 this is a vision that I've seen this need for and we've kind of, we do some things with our man cave concept, but but you're doing it so well at such an yeah. excellent level. The website is so Thanks. clean and, 
and you, people uh, get an app too that they get daily. Uh, what happens if you have the app? Okay, let's do yeah. it this way. Someone wants to start a, start the Exodus. How do they start their own group? Exodus90.com, get started is in the top right corner. So the guy who's going to lead the group, he gets started first. He automatically by signing in creates a fraternity. It won't let you do anything else. And then from there you can put in the other guy's emails of whom you're inviting to this fraternity. And now you have a mobile uh, or an online account. You can download the app, all the same login. So you have all the scripture and meditations there. There's a field guide that explains Exodus 90, explains prayer, explains asceticism, explains fraternity, soaked in scripture and catechism. So we understand this isn't some challenge for 2019. This is the church lived out by men that we have forgotten or haven't been practicing. So they get there, they invite their fraternity, they set up their meetings, uh, and they start whenever they want. They set their start date any day of the year. They could start tomorrow and they can begin their 90 days towards freedom. We got to get, we should have a, we should have 40 new Exodus 90 groups because <laughs> of the show. We need men, you know, here's the thing. People say, I don't really have a men's group in my church. Well, it's your fault. Absolutely. If you see a need, it's the Holy Spirit pointing it out. Take the, take the bold step to do something about it. And wow, this is something you would like to let your pastor know about, but it's not necessarily something done in the, the, the basement of the church building either. I mean, we like to see men gathering together on the back of their, their porch decks. Uh, of course, our man cave sometimes contain, contain a cigar and a shot of whiskey yeah. too. But we want to see the men gather in a very natural settings and, uh, and of course, other places, and just start to get real with each other. We're talking with Nathaniel Binversi. He's the director of missions for Exodus 90. And if you're feeling a little nudge uh, right now, please go to exodus90.com and sign up. You'll probably blow it. And then they'll <laughs> help you. Then you'll figure it out. And before long, you're going to find out because, men, whether you know it or not, you're a leader. People are following you, whether you even know their. Who, look, who's following you? Who's looking at you? They've heard you're a Christian. They're watching you. People are following you. If you're a, if you're a man, you're a born leader. Uh, step into your leadership role. Get and all you need is to is to go to Exodus ninety and sign up. And then you need one. Actually, I always say two other men, just two other men, to get started. And then they will gather the other men. But you need that little nucleus of three. It's like you know in the Boy Scouts, it takes three logs to make a fire. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with uh, DeepAdventure.com with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more with Nathaniel Inversi of Exodus, Nathaniel Binversi of Exodus 90. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're talking with Nathaniel Binversi, the director of missions for Exodus 90. Uh, Nathaniel, what is it that you, what is it right now that men are crying out for? What is it that this the, the men today in this sort of upside down environment that we live in? What is it that you're seeing is the real need among men? Freedom is the the simplest way to say it, and sometimes we know it really clearly, right? For men who struggle with pornography and masturbation, like that's obvious. We want to be free from that, but other men who just like are addicted to their phone or addicted to overworking or addicted to sports. It's hard to acknowledge some of those things. It's hard to see the need for that freedom. But when we sit down and realize at the end of the day, as we lay in bed, man, I, I ignored my children tonight because I was watching the sports game or I ignored my wife because I was still at work, even though I was at home on my phone. So this need for freedom is there and we need other men to call us out and call us on. And if those men are listening on this radio station now, they're the ones who need to be going out and calling out their brothers because as much as they need it, some of their brothers might not be listening today. So you don't have to be perfect to start a group? <laughs> Absolutely not there. No need. Yeah, we need, we need to recognize that, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of a come as you are party, you know? We're all bozos on the same bus. Oh, I have this real problem in my life, this challenge in my life. I'm ashamed of it or whatever. And you find out you're not alone. Other brothers are, are being challenged also. Right now, manhood, manly virtue, it, there's a full-on attack on men on men. In every area of our life, the pornography is a big deal, but in every other, other area of our life, we're being shamed to be men. And we can't do that anymore. In, in the book of Nehemiah, when Nehemiah came and said, rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem, the walls were rebuilt. In fact, a big part of Nehemiah is just describing this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here. 
And this man and his family, we built it from here to here. It's the domestic church, a man and his family. But eventually they came under adversity. And so they learned to have one man stand with a spear and a shield protecting the man who was working rebuilding. So we need to stand with each other. And let's not wait for the enemy. Let's not be bullied by, by Satan anymore. Let's stand up and let's rebuild the wall together. So can you talk to us a little bit more of this, this, the whole sense of freedom? How does fraternity help us gain that sort of freedom? Certainly fraternity helps, especially in regards to how Satan likes to attack us, right? So he wants to isolate us. He wants to push us away from other people, push us into the dark. We know very well from our own experience as men, like when it's late in the evening, when we're alone, that's when we're the biggest idiots. We need men around us to be setting examples of what it means to be a man. That way we have something to follow. We need men around us that we can push to be better men. That way we can hear our own words, calling somebody else out and challenge ourselves to be better. Let me, let me say something to you. You know, about two weeks ago, I, there's, a, there's a bully out in the water who bullies people. He's, he's known all over the world for being a bully here in Waikiki when he's out surfing this one spot. And he even bullied my son when he came back from the war. My son is a, has surfed 85-foot waves. He had no idea who he was because he didn't look like the kid with the long hair that left, you know. And I've seen, he's bullied, bullied all kinds of people. So a couple uh, Sundays ago, I, went, I said, Lord, if he's there, I'm going to go bully him. And I saw him. I said, okay, I'm going to go get my surf in uh, to my where I normally surf. I'm going to paddle out to this place about half a mile out. Then I'm going to come back. And if he's there, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bully him. And um, I, I went into the lineup and I just yelled as loud as I could. Hey, everybody, there's a famous surfer here. Everywhere in the world, people ask me, who is that bully that surfs this spot? And I shamed him and challenged him. And he, and he got argumentative and said, look, I don't want to argue with you. Let's just go to the beach and fight because I had a plan for him. We got to the beach and there's 200 people in this kind of semi arena with three, in three feet of water. And I make an announcement to the whole beach. We have a world famous surfer here. He's the biggest, one of the biggest bullies in, in, in Hawaii. And he bullies people like you. And I'm publicly shaming him today because of the way he has shamed others. And I stood up to that bully. I, 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 what you're saying here in this is, is Satan is on the attack. I'm calling that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, no, I'm going to be on the attack now. I'm not going to mm. let Satan bully me anymore. Pornography is bringing, bringing men down. All these other things are bringing people down. And we just kind of say, well, where's the next attack coming from? We should be on the attack. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. And you men that are listening right now, stand up to the bullying that's going around in your life. And in this sense, Satan is bullying you into isolation from your brothers. You are the one that God is nudging on the shoulder right now to go to Exodus 90 and start your own group and bring men together to say no more to, to the biggest bully on the block, Satan. He's really just a punk. Mm, Jesus has that. defeated him. And so that we're not going to, when people say, oh, you're under spiritual attack. No, I'm on the attack. I'm just facing <laughs> some resistance, but I'm yeah. on the attack. So tell us what are you seeing in the fruit of the, of the men who participate in Exodus 90? You know, how many people have gone, how many members do you have or have gone through it? Yeah, the first three years of our existence, we're in the fourth, as I mentioned earlier now. The first three years, we had about 7,500 go through total. And in this fourth year, we had 8,000 start just in January. What an incredible so, impact. And that's all over the world? It is. All, many different countries all over the world. And it's grassroots, right? We, we didn't, quote unquote, go into the parishes and ask permission, if you will. Hey, can we start some nice men's groups? Can we put it in your bulletin? Men actually just desired to be free. And so we put it out there. Anybody can start it anywhere, and they have. I mean, I love the That Man Is You program. I'm, big, I'm brought it here to Hawaii. But there's something uh, that needs – it's almost like there's this interim step often for men. who I've never, A lot of them have never even been to a church, right? Come and join our Exodus 90. We're, we're, on a, we're going to do a 90-day journey together. Why is the 90 days so significant? It takes time to both be free of old habits and to form new habits. So men can certainly realize by about day 40, day 45, about the length of Lent, right, that they've started to sort of break old habits. But if they stop there, so do the new habits that are being formed. It's in that second set of days when it really sucks, especially day 50 through 70, when it's really tough that the Lord provides significant grace. And we can really start forming new habits that will actually last, not just a nice program to start and stop, but something that's going to form habits for your life. You know, when I, I'm a CPA, when I help people start a new business, I always call it the 90-day rule. Mm. You know, it takes that 90 days of, of, of incubation to kind of 
birth this new thing to get to give it legs and give this birth this new thing and it's the same thing with this this process that's it's that three times around three laps around you know the 30 day 30 day 30 day thing and all of a sudden you're in a you're in a whole new place where you were 90 days ago can be dramatically different but you need to stay with it that community of brothers to continue to su sustain that so what are you seeing in the impact in marriages Absolutely. The, the, the wives' faces and the wives' emails that they send to us uh, certainly scream very loudly of gratitude, right? W wives are getting their husbands back. They're getting them more present to themselves and to their children, whether it be their habits of eating and drinking or simply their, their habits of time wasting is being eliminated and eliminated so that they can be more present. And for those who aren't married, now they're more attuned in their, in their work. Instead of, you know, clicking on ESPN three times during their sales day, now they're actually making sales, you know, and they're mm -hmm. actually doing better. And they're also growing as men, preparing for whatever that vocation might be for them so that that future wife or the church who's preparing for them uh, gets somebody that they actually desire to have as their spouse. What, what do you, the biggest challenge with the millennial, the younger generation and the one coming after that, um, it seems to be, what, what is their, what is the number one thing you see, um, need that they have or a message that they need to hear 90 days is a very long time and it's hard to commit for millennials being a millennial myself i understand we often see the great job that we have in front of us as simply a stepping stone to the next great job where how is this going to get me to the next big thing if you want to be a man if you want to prepare to be married if you want to prepare to love and to serve the lord yes this can be a stepping stone and, but yes, it is a commitment. Don't just do it for 90, don't just do it for 30 days. Don't just do it for 40 days. Like get guys, don't do some of Exodus 90. That's not all of Exodus 90. Do all of Exodus 90 and commit to it. And the 90 days plus one too, right? Yeah, absolutely. C continue in it. We're talking with um, Nathaniel Benversi. He's the director of missions at Exodus 90. Uh, if they want to start a group, can you give us the, the 60 second version of it before we got to go? Exodus90.com. That's Exodus90.com. Top right corner, get started, create your account, invite your friends, put their emails right there, and you're ready to go. Day one, Exodus90. It's the sort of thing you want to do in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, there's no yeah. reason to kind of make it a 30-day process. It's a turnkey situation. Push a couple buttons, call a couple friends. It's something you can do in the next 24 hours. It doesn't take, a, it doesn't take some big startup or a bunch of meetings to do this. You just say, hey, I'm doing this. You guys want to do it with me. And then, the, and then you're, what's the, what's the maximum size for Exodus 90 uh, group usually? Yeah, we try to get five to seven. So eight and nine max 10, it just starts getting too big. So the day after divine mercy Sunday is coming up and it's a great time to start uh, Exodus 90 right after the octave of Easter. Yeah. Well, well, this is being heard 11 weeks later, but, oh, okay. but, um, but, <laughs> but, you know, start, so, you know, so two or three guys can start it. You go to five or six or seven. That's about what our, our group text was like. And, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, when I had that, my, my buddies and I did that a few years ago. Um, and, but it's that, it's that, it's that core, that tight group. We're talking with Nathaniel Benversi from Exodus 90, Exodus 90.com. You got to go there. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com and check it out. We've got a brand new website, a lot of opportunity for you to participate in a ministry. Last words. You got about 10 seconds. Be a man, love our Lord, give of yourself, your wife or your future wife will thank you for it. Amen. Viva Cristo Rey and aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasnick.com.